Hi everyone, let's do some word problems on linear diophantine equations in three variables. The first problem states which combination of pennies, dimes and quarters has a total value of 75 cents. We know that 25 cents make a quarter, 10 cents make a dime and 1 penny is equal to 1 cent. And we are given here that there is at least one of each type. So, let us translate the problem into a mathematical equation. And let the number of pennies, dimes and quarters be x, y and z. Then the equation which we form is x plus 10y plus 25z is equal to 75. We know that number of pennies is x and 1 penny is equal to 1 cent. So the total cents they make is x. Each dime is 10 cents and number of dimes is y. So the total cents are 10y. Each quarter is 25 cents. Number of quarters is z. So the total cents are 25z. If we add all of them, it should add up to 75 cents. Now this is a linear diophantine equation in three variables x, y, z. Such an equation has a solution if the GCD of the coefficients. Here, the coefficients we can see are 1, 10 and 25. Their GCD is 1. And this divides the right hand side 75. So the solution exists. In one of my previous videos, such linear diophantine equations have been solved. You can always refer to them. So then how were they solved? We start by taking any two terms. We can take x plus 10y or we can start with 10y plus 25z or we can take x plus 25z and equate it to some variable u which is multiplied by the GCD of the coefficients. So here we have taken x plus 10y is equal to 1 into u, where 1 is the GCD of 1 and 10. We substitute x plus 10y is equal to u in our original equation, which will give us u plus 25z, u plus 25z is equal to 75. We have now a diophantine equation in only two variables, u and z. To solve this, we start by writing the coefficients of u and z as a linear combination of their GCD. So the coefficients 1 and 25, they are written as the linear combination 1 into minus 24 plus 25 into 1 is equal to the GCD of 1 and 25 which is 1. Using this, we will find the solution. See, the right hand side here is 75. So we will multiply the whole equation by 75. This gives us minus 24 into 75 plus 25 into 75 is equal to 75. The right hand side has become this. What we have here minus 24 into 75 which is nothing but minus 1800. That is a U naught, the initial solution. That's what we call it. And here what we have is a Z naught. Because our equation had the variables u and z, we name them u0 and z0. z0 is this 75. This helps us in writing the general solution. u would be u0 plus 25 into t and z will be equal to z0 which is 75 minus 1 into t. We will Substitute the value of u from the equation 3 in our equation 2. And then solve x plus 10y is equal to u. So again the same thing we repeat. The coefficients of x and y which are 1 and 10. They are written as the linear combination of the GCD. So 1 into minus 9, 10 into 1 we know is equal to 1. If we multiply the whole equation by u. Minus 9u will be x0, the initial solution, and u will be y0, the initial solution for y. And this helps us in writing 
are x and y. So see x naught is minus 9u, so minus 9 into u, which we have earlier found. This gives us 16200 minus 225t. And y naught is u, which is nothing but minus 1800 plus 25t. So the general solution is x naught plus 10k. And y is equal to y naught, which is this, minus 1 into k. Z we already have from our previous steps. Z is 75 minus t. So now we have x, y, z as a general solution. We have been asked to find the number of pennies, dimes, and quarters which add up to 75. And the number of these pennies, dimes and quarters cannot be negative. So we have a condition that our x, y, z should be greater than 0. They also say that at least one of each is present. So we don't take the equality sign. You can notice z is one variable which has only one parameter t. Both x and y have two parameters t and k. So it is always easy to start with z. z has to be positive. So z which is 75 minus t is greater than 0. Which means t has to be less than 75 to give us positive values of z. The smallest positive value of z which we will get is when t is equal to 74, that will give us z is equal to 1. So, if we substitute this t is equal to 74 in our x and y, then we can get a range for k. So, this gives us k value is greater than 45, less than 50. From x and y, this is what we get. We can check these values. Only k is equal to 49 gives positive values for x and y. So, for t is equal to 74 and k is equal to 49, the solution which we get is x is 40, y is 1 and z is 1. Which means 40 pennies, 1 dime and 1 quarter adds up to 75 cents. You have seen t can be less than 75 here we took t to be 74. Let's take t to be 73 now. If we substitute t is equal to 73, we get the range k, which is k is greater than 22 and k is less than 25. So if we take t is equal to 73 and k is equal to 23, t is 73 and k is 23. You can see that only one value lies between 20. Uh, two values lie, in fact, 23 and 24. So for t is 73 and k is equal to 23, we get x is equal to 5, y is equal to 1, z is equal to 1, which means 5 pennies, 2 dime and 2 quarters, they add up to 75. So you've got two different answers here. For values less than 73, when we take t is less than 73, you can try it. When we take t is equal to 72, we cannot find the solution. So, these are two different answers which we have got. And both give us the total as 75 cents. Let's look at another question. In a shop, each pen, pencil and rubber costs $5, $3 and 10 cents respectively. On a particular day, 100 stationary items were sold. And the total receipts were $100. We have to find how many pens, pencils and rubbers were sold. So again we start by assuming number the number of pens, pencils and rubbers to be which were sold to be x, y and z. The equation which we get, we have converted $5 to 500 cents, $3 to 300 cents and this was already in cents, the number of rubbers. Uh, they cost of rubbers. So we have the equation as 500x plus 300y plus 10z and we know that it equals to 
hundred dollars, which is hundred ten thousand cents. We can always strike off one zero all over, divide by ten. Then the other condition which they have given is that a total of hundred stationary items were sold. It means x plus y plus z is hundred. What we do is we pick any one variable from our second equation and substitute that in our equation one. Here we have taken z to be hundred minus x minus y. When we substitute that in our equation one and simplify, we get forty nine x plus twenty nine y is equal to nine hundred. We solve this Diophantine equation in two variables x and y. We repeat the same process of expressing the coefficients as a linear combination of GCD, and then multiplying by the right hand side, which was nine hundred. You will see that the linear combination was forty nine into minus thirteen plus twenty nine into twenty two is one. When we multiply by nine hundred. What we have inside is nothing but a x naught. What we have here is y naught. So we get the general solution as minus thirteen into nine hundred is minus one one seven zero zero plus twenty ninety. Y is equal to y naught, which is twenty two into nine hundred. That is one nine eight zero zero minus forty ninety. Now we have x and we have y. We'll put these values of x and y in our equation two, and that gives us z is minus eight thousand plus twenty two. Again, number of pens, pencils, and rubbers cannot be negative, and we are assuming that each type of item was bought. So we are taking x, y, z to be greater than zero. If you take substitute x is Greater than zero, we get t is greater than four zero four. For y, when we apply that condition that it is greater than zero, we'll get t is less than four zero four. And when we take z to be positive, that is z is greater than zero, this gives us t is equal to four zero four. As it is, uh, you know, t is a parameter. We substitute the value of t. In our equations x, y, z, the only solution which we get is x is sixteen, y is four, and z is eighty. Third question states: Mary wrote an examination where the questions were of two, three, and seven, five marks each. She scored a total of fifty-eight marks out of hundred. Assuming there was no partial marking and She did get marks for each type of question. Find the general solution. Then it says how many questions of each type were correct. If she scored minimum marks in two mark questions, and the other question is what if she scored maximum marks in two mark questions? So let us start by taking the number of two, three, and five mark questions to be x, y, z. This gives us the equation two x plus three y plus five z is equal to fifty eight. The solution of such an equation exists because the GCD of two three five is one and one divides the right hand side fifty eight. So the problem is solvable. Again, we make pairs. Here we have made a pair of three y plus five z, and we equate it to the GCD of three and five, which is one times the variable u. Substitute this in our equation one. We get two x plus u is fifty eight. We write it as a linear combination of the GCD and then multiply by fifty eight. This gives us the initial solution as fifty eight. That is x naught is fifty eight. U naught is minus fifty eight, and the general solution is x is fifty eight plus some parameter t dash, and u is minus fifty eight. Minus two into t dash. Now, if we substitute u in equation two and solve three y plus five z is equal to u, the general solution which we get is x is fifty eight 
plus t dash y is minus 116 minus 4t dash plus 5t and z comes out to be 58 plus 2t dash minus 3t. This is when we solve this equation which is explained here. Now, the question states that she got marks for each type of question. So, we have taken x, y, z to be positive. That is, they are all greater than 0. When she scored minimum marks in two mark questions, for that, if you see, out of the three variables x, y, z, x has only one parameter, t dash. So, we start with x is greater than 0 and that will give us that our t dash will be less than 58. So, here we have taken t dash to be minus 57 and when we substitute that t dash is minus 57 from when we substitute it in y and z, we will get t is minus 21. So, one solution which we get is x is 1, y is 7, z is 7. When we take t dash to be minus 57 and t to be minus 20, we will get 1, x is 1, y is 12, z is 4. And when we take t to be minus 19, we get x is 1 y is 17 and z is equal to 1. So, for our first part of the question where it says that find the, if she scored minimum marks in two mark questions, you can see that here she has only done one question of 2 marks and in the second part we have to find when she scored maximum marks in 2 mark questions we can see we see take t dash to be minus 36 and t is equal to minus 19. For these values we get x is 22, y is 3 and z is 1. So the ma maximum questions she attempted was of 2 marks. Let us move on to the next question. A vending machine can only receive nickels, dimes and quarters. If a day's collection is $15 and it is observed that the number of dimes is double of number of nickels, find how many of each were there. Given number of dimes and quarters are more than the nickels and that there are each type present. So, we start by taking the number of nickels, dimes and quarters to be x, y, z. It is also given to us that the number of dimes is double of number of nickels. So, y is equal to 2x. We form the first equation 5x plus 10y plus 25z is equal to 1500. We have converted $15 into cents. All of them have been changed into um, cents. and as y is 2x, we will substitute that. This reduces our equation to an equation in two variables. 25x plus 25z is equal to 1500. We can divide by 25. We get x plus z is equal to 60. Now, the general solution from here is x is 120 plus t. You can check that. z is equal to minus 60 minus t. We also know y is equal to 2x. So, if we multiply x by 2, we get y value. All three x, y, z have to be positive. So, when we apply this, we get the range as t is less than minus 60 and t is greater than minus 20 or you can write it as t is greater than minus 20 less than minus 60. Let us take t is equal to minus 61 from this range. The one solution which we get is x is 
59, y is 118 and z is equal to 1. You can always check if other solutions exist or not by trying the values in this range, 40. The next question states a man bought some 37 cent, 49 cent stamps. He also bought Abraham Lincoln postage stamps worth 21 cents each. He paid a total of $10 for all of them. How many of each kind did he buy? So we assume that the number of 37, 49 and 21 cents be x, y, z. We form the equation. Now $10 we have changed into cents as each one of them were given and the cost was given in cents. We will start by any two terms. Here we have taken 49y plus 21z is equal to GCD of 49 and 21 which is 7 times the variable u. We substitute 49y plus 21z is equal to 7u in our first equation. This gives us 37x plus 7u is equal to 1000. We solve using a method of expressing first the coefficients 37 and 7 as the linear combination of GCD. Then we multiply by 1000 to make it similar to our above equation. This gives us the general solution as minus 3000 plus 70 and our u as 16 thousand minus thirty seventy. So we know our u now. If we put the u value in this equation, we solve it and we get y as sixteen thousand minus thirty seven t plus three times t dash and z as minus thirty two thousand plus seventy four t minus seventy dash. So we have all the variables x, y and z here. We have to find how many of each kind did he buy. So we start with the variable which has only one parameter. We see x has only one parameter. We will, x has to be positive. So minus 3000 plus 70 has to be greater than 0. T value we take to be 429 and T dash when we substitute this in Y and Z we will get a range for T dash. If we take T dash to be minus 40 the answer which we get is X is 3, Y is 7 and Z is 26. Here you can we've skipped how we find the range for t and t dash, you have to apply whatever we did earlier. Similar thing is used here. John buys a dozen muffins, 8 pastries and 10 pizzas by paying $60 for them. What was the cost of each item he bought? Next time when he goes to buy the same number of each item, the baker tells him that now the pizzas are going to cost 10 cents more. How much more he has to pay to buy the same number of each item. Let us say that the cost of each muffin, pastry and pizza is $x, $y and $z. The equation which we get is because he bought 10, he bought a dozen muffins. So 12x plus 8y plus 10z is equal to 60. We've taken them to be x, y, z to be the costs in dollars. And here also it is in dollars, so we equate it to 60. You can divide all over by 2. And again we solve by taking two terms. Here we have taken 4y plus 5z is equal to u. We get the equation 6x plus u is equal to 30. We express 6 and 1 as the linear combination of the GCD. We multiply by 30, which is the right-hand side. We get the general solution as x is equal to x naught, which is 30, plus t, u, which is minus 50, minus 6t. And 
when we solve our equation where we had taken the substitution 4y plus 5z is equal to u, u value we already have. The general solution which we get is x is 30 plus t, y is 150 plus 60 plus 5t dash and z comes out to be minus 150 minus 60 minus 4t dash. Now, we know that the cost has to be positive, x, y, z, all three have to be positive. So, here, when x is positive, we start with x is greater than 0 because only one parameter is there. We know that this will be greater than 0 if t is less than 30, if we take t to be minus 29 and substitute this value of t is minus 29 in these two equations for in y and z, we will get t dash. Here we have taken t dash to be 5. We get the costs as x is 1, y comes out to be 1 and z comes out to be 4. We had to know this to solve the next part of the question which says when he goes to buy the same number of each item, Baker tells him that now pizzas are going to cost 10 cents more. So how much more he has to pay to buy the same number of each item. So now just see the cost for muffins and pastry did not change but for pizza he had bought 10 pizzas and each pizza cost 10 cent more. So 10 into 10 that is 100 cents he is supposed to pay more or 1 dollar more. A group of men, women and children attend a party. They have 20 coins in all. For the party, each man has to pay 3 coins, each woman has to pay 2 coins and each child has to pay 1 coin. You have to form the Diophantine equation and give the general solution. Is it possible to find how many men, women and children attended the party? Justify your answer. We will start by taking number of men, women and children to be XYZ. Let's form the equation. So, each man pays 3 coins. So, we have 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 20 as the total coins were 20. Solution exists as the GCD of 3, 2, 1 is 1 and that divides the right hand side. So, the question which was here, is it possible to find how many men, women and children attend to the party has been answered. The solution exists. Now you take the substitution 2y plus z is equal to u. We can take any two terms. Here we have taken this. And we substitute this 2y plus z is equal to u in our original equation. That gives us 3x plus u is 20. We will again write 3 and 1 as the linear combination of the GCD. Right hand side is 20. Multiply by 20. We get x naught as 20. And we get u naught as minus 40. The general solution is x is 20 plus t. This 1 into t. GCD is 1 so we don't uh, have anything in the denominator. And u is equal to minus 40 minus 3t. When we solve 1 now. Because u we already have from here. We can see 2 into u plus 1 into minus u gives us u. So, our y naught is u and z naught, the initial solution, is minus u. General solution becomes as u was minus 40 minus 3t, so this u is minus 40 minus 3t, plus 1 times some other parameter t dash, and z becomes minus u. So multiply this by minus, it becomes 40 plus 3t minus 2 into t dash. The general solution is given here. Now, x, y, z, they have to be positive because number of men, women and children cannot be negative. Again, start with x because there is only one parameter t. For x to be greater than 0, t has to be less than 20. And the smallest value of x, positive value of x, will be achieved when t is 
minus 19. Let's take t to be minus 19, what we've got from here, and substitute in the other two variables y and z. This will give us one value of t dash as minus 16. Once we substitute them in all the variables x, y, z, we get x is 1, y is 1, and z is 15. That is one man, one woman, and 15 children attended the party. You can try for other solutions also from these variables x, y, z. The condition is x, y, and z. They all three have to be positive. Thank you for watching.